Hello everyone, my name is Pradesilos, also known as Prod. In this video I want to share with you the news that I have published the first stable version of my accessible themes for Emacs. Uh, it's a, a pair of themes, a light theme, the one I have uh, here in front of me and the display to my right, and a dark theme. Uh, the purpose of these themes, the reason I have created them, is uh, to fill in a perceived uh, void in the theming space, which is highly accessible uh, themes. Uh, these uh, conform with the highest accessibility standard for uh, color contrast between uh, foreground and the background uh, values. Uh, in technical terms, uh, this stands for a minimum contrast ratio of uh, 7 to 1 uh, between the background and the foreground uh, value. And uh, this is uh, calculated as a difference in perceived uh, luminance. Uh, by the way, in my backlog, if you check my backlog, I have a video on this uh, very topic and I go into the technicalities of it, as well as the fact that I implemented the actual uh, mathematical formula in a shell script, so I am using that uh, shell script to actually uh, perform the calculations in an easy and uh, convenient way. But anyhow, not to worry you, uh, not to bother you too much with the technicalities, what I want to do here is just tour you around the various interfaces of this theme, the various styles. I have Emacs here in front of me and I want to show you a few things. The way I will be doing this, I will be starting with the light theme and then I will switch to the dark theme. But because the difference between the two is quite uh, um, stark, I will be warning you every time I am performing a theme switch so that you can adapt uh, your monitor's brightness accordingly or just uh, take a step away from the screen and things like that just to make sure that you do not uh, stutter yourself and you know, um, be annoyed by the sudden switch in uh, context. Anyhow, um, I will not be activating screen key as I do in my recent videos because the point here is not to focus on my key presses just on the things that I am uh, highlighting here. So let me start since my cursor, since my point is over there, let me start with this very thing here, which is the highlighting of the matching parenthesis. I consider this of paramount importance when working with uh, a, a code with a programming language like uh, Lisp because uh, it helps you know exactly where the demarcation is of the object that you're working on. So uh, matching parentheses are styled this way, whereas a mismatch, let's have a mismatch, please. Okay, whereas a mismatch is styled that way. We can see the difference between the two, so you can clearly tell them apart. Uh, let's uh, come here. So yeah, as I said, the point with everything, every color that you see here should always uh, be above uh, the accessibility threshold that I have established the highest accessibility threshold that exists uh, out there. And uh, always, uh, when, it, when it is cast on the given background that you see, it should always be seven to one or higher. That's the idea. Let's start with the comments that we can see here. Comments are very readable. Uh, however, their uh, foreground value is lighter. It's a gray value. It's lighter than the pure black that we see elsewhere. But however, it is still uh, very legible. We can see that uh, documentation strings such as this one are styled differently than other strings, such as the ones over here. Uh, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. Th by the way, this is the actual uh, theme. Uh, I, the, I used, when I started this uh, project, I used uh, the function customize create theme and then uh, I adapted uh, some of the paradigms from the built-in uh, Tango theme, uh, specifically the way it would uh, map uh, variables, colors to variables, and then use these variables uh, to propagate the various va values uh, across the theme. So I'm using the same approach exactly as the Tango, and I am documenting this in my uh, documentation over here in the description. Yeah, so this is the thing. Here on the window here to the right, we have an org file. 
and we can see how the code blocks are styled. The header of the code block and the footer have a different shade of background to the body of the code here, and so you can tell them apart very easily. We can see some italics over here. We can see a link. We can see some inline code. Yeah, of course. What else is there in org? Yeah, that's the idea with these. Obviously, in a theme as well, uh, colors must uh, work well when combined with each other. So uh, I will not bother you with that. This is subjective. I think uh, that these colors work well with each other. But of course, uh, you may disagree and have a different uh, approach on the matter. Anyhow, yeah, these are the things. Let's uh, switch to something else and see what we got. This is the buffer list. This is uh, I menu. Uh, these are directories. We can tell them apart from uh, the special buffers, and we can also tell them apart from these buffers over here. The what's the this package called? I think the um, author of this package plays a, a word uh, with magic, so he wants us to call it magit, but I don't think that sounds too nice. I prefer to call it magit, and that's how I will be calling it from now on, magit. So we can tell magit apart from the other buffers and from ordinary files and everything. Let's switch to the directory editor, dired. We can see how directories uh, have different colors. We can see that the um, backup files are different from the ordinary files. Let's come here and let's mark this for deletion. We can see how it is different from an ordinary mark. Very nice, very easy to tell apart. Okay, undo the marks please. Um, let's see what else do we have here. Uh, Magit. Let's see the log, or the git log. We can tell exactly what is going on. Everything is very easy to read. Um, okay, what else in uh, Magit? I think I have another couple of things. Ah, yeah, diff. Let's come here. Diff is very important. In uh, Magit, when you move over a chunk, so a specific uh, part that you have uh, tweaked, it is uh, highlighted. So you can see the difference in uh, color. You can see how these are uh, different from each other. Exactly, that's the whole point. That's very nice. I like it. Uh, let me see if I have something else I would like to show you. Ah, yeah, the occur buffer. But let's do this here. Let's close this actually now. And uh, let's come here and let's run occur. By the way, my very last video is on uh, this specific uh, function, occur, and how powerful it is and how you can use it to boost your productivity but I will not go into that right now. Let's run just a, a search for this specific thing. We can see that it matches uh, everything that we searched for. Everything is very clear, easy to read. Let's do this. We can see, let's mark some text and put it like this. Maybe we can see how they uh, can be tell apart, how you can uh, distinguish the one from the other. Everything should be very clear. That's the thing. Uh, let's close this and let's come here. Let's perform an eye search, an incremental search. Please search for foreground. And we can see, just come here where we have lots of them. Let's do this again. Um, let's, sorry, foreground. We can see how it uh, highlights the uh, first match and then how different uh, is the style for the lazy highlight, the feature of highlighting the next matches. We can see it, it's very easy to tell apart. Okay, that's it. Um, I believe this covers it for the light theme. Ah, uh, yeah, no, there is a couple more. more. Uh, line numbers, we can see them. It's easy to tell them apart from the rest of the buffer. And also you can tell on which uh, line you are. Uh, let me also uh, show you the uh, mode line. We can see that the mode line is different. Okay, of course I understand that uh, there are lots of packages out there to style uh, the mode line to your liking, but this is the vanilla, the default uh, mode line, which uh, by the way, I kind of like uh, and might slightly tweak, but I overall like the simplicity of it. 
Anyhow, we can tell uh, by the mode line uh, which uh, window has focus. Okay, let's close everything. Let's also do this. And now I want to switch to the dark theme. So please uh, adjust your monitor accordingly or take a step back from the screen. Uh, I have a toggle in my init file uh, which allows me to switch themes just by pressing a key chord. So I am doing that. I'm giving you another extra second. Okay, hopefully you are done and this will not stutter you. Let's get going. Okay, so this is uh, the dark theme. By the way, the dark theme is uh, called Modus Vivendi, whereas the light theme is called Modus Operandi. These are Latin phrases. Modus Operandi means your way of uh, conduct, your way of operation, the way you conduct yourself, whereas Modus Vivendi is your mode of living, the way you live. Anyhow, not to bother you too much with uh, Latin. Uh, okay, here we can see the code again. We can see the documentation string is different from the other strings. Uh, we can see the matching of the parentheses. Show me a mismatch, please. That's very nice. Let's uh, run an occur buffer here. Again, let's search for foreground. Let's uh, switch here. We can see exactly how everything is uh, different. Uh, let's come here and uh, start highlighting the line. Okay, we can see the different uh, shades of uh, blue. You can tell them apart. Very good. Let's perform an incremental search. Cro close this, please. Uh, let's come a bit further below so that we can have them all in one place as you can see, foreground. Okay, we can see, by the way, you can expand the incremental search while you are running a search by pressing Control and W. So let's do just that. We can see how different they are, the styles from each other. Always remember, we are always conforming with the highest accessibility standard, right? So what matters, uh, the, what is of utmost importance is uh, that these function properly. And then, of course, uh, a secondary importance is assigned to their aesthetic uh, uh, qualities. However, what really matters is that the contrast ratio is uh, above 7 to 1. Okay, this is very nice. We like it. I like it. Let me show you the um, mode lines here. This mode line and the other ones below. We can tell them apart. Uh, did I do line numbers? I'm not sure. Let's make sure. Okay, these are the line numbers. You can easily see where you are. Line numbers is something I never really use, but it's there. I have a toggle for it if I ever need it. Anyhow, not to bother you too much with this. Let's switch to the buffer list. Everything is clear. You can tell them apart. These are special buffers. These are directories, files, uh, magit and things like this. Le let's switch to um, the directory editor. Let's, let's do the thing with the mark for deletion and mark the regular mark. We can see how they are clearly different. Very nice. Please don't do anything to my files. Uh, let's come back to the directory editor. Uh, again, let's have a look at the git log. Everything is uh, easy to read. Very good. Uh, again, my git, sorry. Uh, ah, yeah, show me the diff, please. Okay, this is a bit intense, but as you can see, again, we can see how they are uh, highlighted. Again, I remember, I remind you that this is all about accessibility, so the contrast ratio is always high. Keep that in mind when uh, assessing uh, the quality of this theme. And by the way, just to say that uh, because this is a recording uh, of the output of my monitor, chances are that the actual colors are distorted a bit. So please, whatever you see, don't take it as a perfect representation of the actual color values. Uh, you can uh, check the source code. I have a link uh, to these uh, uh, themes in the description. Uh, so please do that. Uh, what else in uh, Magit? Yes, of course, everything is uh, legible here. Uh, let's switch to the uh, org file. Let's have a look at this. How does it look? We can see that this is the org file uh, or the code blocks. We can see the code blocks, how they look. Um, what else do we have here? Yeah, everything should be very legible. 
You can see the comments here are very legible, the header and the footer of the code block. Uh, yeah, things of that nature. Anything else? I believe I have covered everything. Yeah, to do items, links, how you hover over the link. This uh, thing here, the, mag the um, org mode the headings. And I believe I have uh, showcased most of it, if not uh, all of it. Uh, I believe I haven't left out anything. I did the search, I did the care. Uh, yeah, I believe that's it, folks. Uh, I have, let me think about it for a second. I should have some links over here so that you can uh, see them as well on the screen. Let's increase the font size for this. So these are the links. Uh, the link to my org file, my init file, is uh, this one gitlab.com forward slash protesilaus forward slash dot emacs and the link to the themes that I just uh, demoed is gitlab.com forward slash protesilaus forward slash modus hyphen themes as I said the links uh, to these will be available in the description so no need for you to read them from here uh, I guess that covers it uh, these themes uh, um, please note that these themes are still uh, in their early phase, uh, they work, they are stable, I like them, I use them all the time. Uh, however, because I am still new to Emacs, I have not been exposed uh, to all packages out there and I am well aware that uh, packages tend to define their own faces, their own constructs and assign their own uh, colors to them and uh, this is something that I do not like because chances are that these colors uh, have not been uh, selected with uh, accessibility in mind specifically uh, accessibility of the sort I have here which is the highest uh, standard WCAGAAA is the technical uh, name so uh, the more I am using Emacs as my uh, working environment as <laughs> the operating system inside my operating system uh, the more I will be exposed to these uh, faces these custom faces and I will be of course uh, styling them accordingly as I go uh, that's all for now folks thank you very much for your attention uh, goodbye